Welcome everyone to another video. Today I want to take a look at the new Microsoft Edge built on Chromium and this browser's actually been out for a little while but I still want to take a look at it just because it's a very common browser for people to use because it's the default on Windows 10. I will link this page down below in the notes and please be aware that yes it is available for Windows 10 but it's also available for Windows 8.1, 8, if you're still using Windows 7 it's available Mac OS, iOS, and Android, and so it's really designed to be available as your main daily driver and be able to sync across all your devices, no matter which device it is that you're using. Please be aware that if you do choose to download and install Microsoft Edge on a Windows computer, Windows 10 specifically, it will replace the old version of Microsoft Edge. So for if any reason you want to continue using the old version of Edge, don't download and install this because it will become no longer available. But also please be aware that in a future update of Windows 10, eventually they will be replacing the old version of Edge for all users, so eventually you will have to use the new version. Now one of the first things I wanted to take a look at with this web browser was to compare it to Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, and the Brave web browser to see how it compares as far as CPU and RAM usage. And so on your screen, you can see a comparison between those four browsers. Basically what I did is I took 10 websites and opened them in Microsoft Edge. And then I also opened those same exact 10 websites in the other three web browsers. There were a couple of videos playing, so I made sure the videos were in sync. I basically made everything as similar or the same as possible between the web browsers. And then took a look here in Task Manager to see how much CPU it was using and how much RAM it was using in comparison to Chrome, Brave, and Firefox. Now basically in short, Google Chrome and Brave both run on Chromium just like the new Microsoft Edge. And when it came to the CPU usage, there was no major difference. They kept leapfrogging each other, had very similar usage, and so really there was no major difference between those three web browsers. When it came to Microsoft Edge and Mozilla Firefox, there was a little bit more of a difference, not major, but a little bit more of a difference. And that makes sense because Mozilla Firefox is not built on Chromium. And so the majority of the time, Firefox was using a little bit more CPU than Microsoft Edge. But again, there were times where Microsoft Edge would leapfrog Firefox. Regardless, they were very close as far as their CPU usage. Now, if we sort the RAM column, we can see that it's a much more consistent and clear result. Microsoft Edge consistently used less RAM than all three other browsers, less than Chrome, less than Brave, and less than Firefox. Now, let me please make a note right here, a disclaimer, that these results may vary. Because we're all using different computers, different hardwares, different operating systems, different internet connections, we're using our browsers for different web applications and different websites, these results can differ. But it, at least in this specific test, Microsoft Edge consistently used less RAM than those other three web browsers. And this may not be a big concern if you have, you know, for example, 32 gigs of RAM because the gap between them was not major. But if you are using a device that only has, say, 4 gigs of RAM or 6 gig of RAM, this could actually be a, a web browser you may want to take a look at because it could possibly reduce your RAM usage while browsing different websites and different web applications. Now, I'm not going to go over everything that is available here in Microsoft Edge because, again, it's very similar to other Chromium web browsers. But some of the main highlights, if I go up here to a new tab, we will find an option up here in the address bar to change to the reader view. And you will find this option in other web browsers. But additionally, we do have some additional options. We have grammar tools text preferences, and we do have a read aloud option. Learn about tracking prevention in Microsoft Edge. What are trackers? Websites use trackers to collect. Now I'm going to go ahead and stop it so it's not talking over me, but basically if you want to have the ability to have your browser read aloud or read to you, that is available. You can also locate it here in the menu. There's a read aloud option right here. You can also change the voice. If you don't like the voice or the sound of the voice, you can change it with these options here as well, as well as the speed. Now, if we click on the menu and go down to extensions, here we have our extensions page and we can click on get extensions from the Microsoft store. And this will list the current extensions that are available. Please note if there's an extension you want to use that's not available here in the Microsoft store, what you need to do is go back to extensions 
and come down here to the bottom left corner and turn on allow extensions from other stores. And so if you wanted to then use an extension from say the Google Chrome Web Store, you can now do that. Additionally, if we go back here to the menu and go down to settings, Again, it's going to look very similar to other Chromium web browsers, but of course we do have an option to sign in so that way we can sync all of our information between devices, between our Microsoft Edge web browser. Additionally, over here in privacy and services, this was something I really was surprised to see and happy to see here in Microsoft Edge where they're taking tracking prevention more seriously. Now, the first at first when I saw this, it reminded me of Mozilla Firefox because it has a very similar option here in its privacy and security section. For the average user, you're going to want to use the balance option and then turn on strict for private browsing. I generally use strict as default, but as it mentions here at times, it may cause certain websites not to work. In my own personal use, I find that most of the time it works without problems, but on occasion, you will run into some hiccups. And so again, for the average user, you're probably going to want to use balanced. And then again, just make sure you turn on this bottom option for private browsing. You do have some additional privacy and security options down here below. Right here, you can control what's sent to Microsoft. And additionally, if we go down here, you'll note that Microsoft Defender Smart Screen is working here in the new Microsoft Edge. Now, this is part of the built-in Windows security and other web browsers do filter the URLs that you're going to to help prevent you from going to malicious websites. But this one specifically is using smart screen. You can also turn on this option as well to increase security, though you may run into issues when trying to install specific applications. If you want to change your default search engine, you can do so right here by clicking on address bar. And then in this drop down, you can select whichever default search engine you would like to use. Please note that Bing will be the default. So you will have to come here to change it if you'd like to do so. If we come over here to appearance, over here underneath themes, again, if you go to extensions and want to download a theme from the Chrome uh, web store, you can do that. Again, you'll just have to turn on that setting that I mentioned earlier. But the other thing you'll want to notice here is if you want the home button, you do have to flip this switch on. And then right here, you can type in whatever you'd like your homepage to be. Now this is separate from startup here over on the startup section. If you can set specifically what happens when you first open Microsoft Edge. And so if you want a specific page to come up, such as your homepage, you would have to click on add a new page and then type in the URL for that specific web page. You can also come over here to the new tab page. And this is referring to what happens when you first open up a new tab. It's this page right here. And so you can customize this if you'd like to do so. We can just click on this gear icon. And we do have some options here. Right now it's on inspirational, but we can switch to focus. We can go to informational. You do have some customized options here. Not a ton, but regardless, you can set up this page to look the way that you'd like to. It's very similar to what you see in Brave or even the Opera web browser. We can come down here and add a site if we'd like to do so. We can also remove or rename if we need to right here as well. And that's basically just a quick and simple look at the new Microsoft Edge browser built on Chromium. I think they are taking the right steps or going in the right direction. However, if you're someone who doesn't like using a Chromium based web browser, then in that situation, I would refer you to Mozilla Firefox. And when it comes to privacy and security, they are taking steps in the right direction, though it doesn't have all the same privacy and security features that you may find in, say, Brave. Regardless, I think this is a good web browser. I don't think you're going to run into as many performance issues that we found in the old version of Edge, where some web applications would just not work or would break, or other just strange hiccups and other things that didn't always work correctly in the old version of Microsoft Edge. As far as hacking and security, time will tell. A lot of that depends on you, the user. You need to make sure that you're very careful with the extensions you install. I strongly recommend for those of you who are not aware of my other videos that you avoid extensions whenever possible. I generally recommend that you don't install any. But again, if you are going to install extensions, just make sure you're, you're very careful as to which ones you are installing on your browser. Be careful what you click on, be careful what you install, and just be smart when you're on the web. At the end of the day, if you want to find out if this is a good web browser for you, you will need to use it on your specific devices. I do recommend at least giving it a shot, but again, more options is always good. And so if you don't like this one, you could always switch back to Brave or Firefox or even Chrome if you are a Chrome user. That's everything for this video. If you have any comments or questions, please post them down below. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a great day.
If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you found it helpful, please go ahead and consider sharing it. And please also consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notifications on future videos.